Hello and welcome. I am Maestra Teacher and this is my fifth grade Oasis channel. I've been a teacher for more than 20 years. I've taught Jeanette and bilingual class. In today's video, I would like to share with you how I teach my class on vocabulary. Vocabulary is one of the most important skills the students must learn, not only in fifth grade, but in all grades, because knowledge of vocabulary will lead to reading comprehension. In fifth grade, reading comprehension is the core of our course. So of course, learning vocabulary is key for students to be able to understand what they read. If you are a brand new teacher or just new to teaching fifth grade, know that there are basically three skills that you should be teaching in fifth grade when it comes to vocabulary. And those three are, number one, using a dictionary, whether is it a physical book or a digital dictionary. Number two, using context clues to find the meaning of unfamiliar words. And number three, maybe using root words, prefixes, and so on. Now I will show you how I do the three of them in my class. Yay! Using a dictionary is an important skill that students have because when they are testing, at least in the state of Texas, during their testing time, the state test, they are allowed to actually use a dictionary, especially if they are bilingual students. So it's very important that you teach them how to do that so that when they are taking the test, they can use it at any time. You can teach a lesson on how to use a dictionary. You can, uh, when you do the I do part of your lesson, you directly teach it. You present a video or any kind of uh, pictures or anchor charts that can help you um, teach to the students how to use the dictionary. Maybe students have used a dictionary before, maybe they have never used a dictionary, so you have to start from the basic. You teach them that it goes in alphabetical order, how to find the words, what are the guide words on top, uh, and then you let them, of course, practice. The second one, of course, using context clues. You have to teach the students how to do this skill. You can model it for them. Let's say you uh, present to the class a passage or a paragraph. You put it on the screen and then the student, uh, you teach the students to always, as they read, circle unfamiliar words. I tell them that as they're reading and annotating, one of the things they should annotate are words that they don't know the meaning of. And then they, you have to teach them to look around that word, to look at the previous sentence or the next sentence, to look at the pictures around the paragraph, to try to hint them of the meaning of the word. And they can come up with the meaning that way. The last one is, of course, using prefixes. Um, for this one, I have an anchor chart that I, I have the students uh, write it, and then in centers, they can practice learning and memorizing the meaning of the, of the prefix uh, so they can begin associating when they have that a word that are in the test or in, in any passage that has this, that prefix. If they already know what the prefix means, then they will be able to figure out the meaning of the word, but they have to memorize this. This one is very good also for uh, the science class because using prefixes in science also uh, help the students during the science test. So My textbook, the one I use in class, already brings the vocabulary cards ready for students to use. They bring a picture, they bring the word, they bring the meaning and activities that students can do. This is excellent. Every single week, I use these vocabulary cards to teach the students new vocabulary words. As you can see here, the first thing I do is to present the word. I Usually, every, every reading brings about eight to 10 new words. So usually, my vocabulary day should be between Monday and Tuesday at the beginning of the week, right before we actually read the story. So this is the example of this week's lesson. I was reading a story called Captain Arsenio. So I will present first the vocabulary word. Uh, this vocabulary word I acquired from the website of the textbook. All of them are there online. So I just presented on my big screen. 
And the first thing I do, of course, if you can see here, I put the picture and I ask the students, uh, what do they think that word means? Let's try to associate, let's try to make connections. Look at this word. What do you think, uh, or what do you think it means? Look at the picture in his hand. And then the kids will start telling you uh, different uh, words and, and sometimes they get it and sometimes they need a little help. I also have the students repeat the words. So for example, distinguish, I have them say distinguish. And then we look at the picture and to try to uh, make the connection between the word and the picture. After we make the connection, we try to make educational guesses about what the word means. Then we go ahead and I'll give them the definition and they will write it down in their journal. After they are done writing the definitions in their journal, then what I usually have them do is either work in teams, uh, sample of the Friar model. The Friar model is a way of you to apply that word differently. Some Friar models include the definition, a sentence with it, examples, non-examples. My version of my Friar model, the way I do it with my class, yes, they have to write the definition, they have to write a sentence with it, they, have, they can make a drawing related to the word, but I also use one of the squares for them to make a connection. If the student is able to connect that word to their real life, they will be able to remember it a lot better than not having a connection. So my version of my Friar model, again, I don't put examples, I just put make a connect. You can also give them a little quiz at the end. In our uh, textbooks, they bring, bring questions related to the vocabulary, but you can also create your own. As you can see here, I just put 10 different questions. That could be your quiz of the words, or maybe the next day you can do that with them to make sure they uh, remember the meaning of the words. Once we are done then discussing all the words and the students practice them using the Friar model uh, graphic organizer, then those words I, read, I write them down in an index card with their meaning behind it and I post them in my vocabulary wall and they stay there for the rest of the week. So at any point throughout the week, if a student forget a word or they need to go quickly, they can just pick up the word and glance at it or you can have them play games with the word or uh, tell each other, uh, quiz each other on the words. One can hold the card, the other tell the meaning and so on. The following class or the following day, then you quickly uh, go over the vocabulary one more time and then the kids are ready to begin reading now that they acquired the vocabulary and then you do your reading. And as you're reading, if you can see in my book, it already brings the definition right there. So if a student, a lot of the students quickly tell me, oh, teacher, this word is here, the one we, the one we learned yesterday. And I say, yes, because that's why we were learning it because it's part of our uh, text. So uh, just guide them, show them where the word is. Again, um, it helps them remember. By the end of the week, I also like to teach the students or practice with them how vocabulary questions will come in their state test. So as you can see here, uh, I usually give them examples and we practice together at some point at the end of the week, every week, uh, the three ways that vocabulary can be tested. It could be a context clues question, it could be a dictionary question, or it could be a um, prefix question. So uh, we practice, they get to see it, because not only you have to teach vocabulary for them to learn, of course it's important, but these kids at the end of the year will be tested in the state test, and they have to be exposed on how those questions are gonna be asked. Well, there you have it. That's how I do my vocabulary weekly lessons. Please um, comment down below if you agree with my strategies or maybe you have a different one that you implement and you want to share it with me. Subscribe to my brand new channel, click like on this video, and I'll see you in my next lesson. See you soon. Yay!